VPNs and Tor are the two most commonly cited tools for online privacy and security, creating one of the largest privacy debates of all time, Tor versus VPN. But how do they compare when you actually stack them against each other? VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, a tool originally used to provide access to corporate applications and resources to remote users and branch offices. This has been repurposed as an advertised privacy, security, and anonymity tool to help fight geo-blocking, censorship, and hide your online identity through the VPN tunnel, which connects you to a server somewhere in the world to protect you. Unfortunately, that is a lot of advertising and there are many limitations to VPNs, which sparks this whole debate in the first place. Tor is an overlay network that uses volunteer-run relays to anonymize the traffic of Tor users. Tor stands for the Onion Router. Onion because before your connection reaches a final destination, it goes through three layers of encryption on three independent Tor relays. There are thousands of active relays on the Tor network at any time, and Tor automatically generates a new circuit for each destination or session. No single relay knows the full traffic, and no Tor circuit carries your entire internet traffic. To help explain Tor, I brought along a special guest, the Hated One, to do a bit of explaining for us. Hello y'all, it's me, the Hated One. Thank you Henry for inviting me on your channel, it feels really awesome to finally collab with you. Using Tor has plenty of advantages for everyday internet use and advanced threat models alike. Tor is by far the strongest anonymization and traffic analysis resistance tool. If used properly, Tor can make it really hard to perform targeted attacks, and it renders mass surveillance economically unfeasible. To make the most out of Tor, use it on a daily basis for everything that doesn't involve online accounts with your real identity. Tor's only limitation is that users can compromise their anonymity through bad operation security. If you want to learn about good OPSEC practice, check out my anonymity tutorials or the official documentation of the Tor project. All Tor software is released as free and open source. There is no cost to using Tor and you don't have to blindly trust any proprietary code because there is none. Because anyone can run a Tor relay, Tor is completely decentralized. There is no single point of failure, and even if there are malicious nodes, Tor circles between them so frequently, likelihood of a potential compromise is limited to a minimum. Most common Tor applications come as pre-bundled, ready-to-use software that requires no additional configuration. Tor Browser is the official web browser that works out of the box on any operating system. Tails and Hunix offer full anonymization on the level of your desktop OS, and Nordbot on Android lets you use Tor for any individual app or even your entire phone. While connected to Tor, you can access the dark web by visiting any Onion site you want, like DuckDuckGo or Privacy Tools. If Tor is censored in your country, or just want to hide the fact you're using Tor from your internet service provider, you can connect to Tor through bridges, which are able to easily bypass government firewalls. Tor enables many projects to exist that wouldn't be otherwise possible. There is a secure drop that journalists use to securely communicate with their sources, Onion Share to share files anonymously, or instant messengers like Briar that offer anonymous chats. Because Tor goes to such great lengths to keep you anonymous, it does come at a cost of convenience. Using Tor networks should come with expectations of noticeable drops in speed. Some Tor applications at certain configuration break their user experience. If you set Tor browser to the safest security level, it will disable all JavaScript, which may make a lot of websites unusable. And finally, some websites will assault you with annoying capture requests or straight out rejecting Tor connections. That's not the fault of Tor, it's just part of what you should expect when using it. I'm a giant simp for Tor, but there are legitimate use cases for VPNs too. Thank you again, Henry, for having me. You can take it from here, I trust you. Thank you, though. Now that we have the breakdown of Tor, let's talk about VPNs. The first overwhelming advantage to VPNs is speed. Nowadays, WireGuard and insane server counts means that if your goal is downloading or streaming large amounts of content, VPNs are still kind of the way to go for the utmost speed for your downloading needs. When you're downloading and using a VPN, it's typical for them to out of the box tunnel everything on your computer through the service with no configuration needed. This is also commonly combined with a kill switch to ensure no IP address leaks happen if something happens to your VPN connection. 
Tor can do this, but it can require configuration, and it's recommended mostly to be done on tools designed for it, like Hunix and Tails OS. Another advantage to VPNs is options in settings, protocols, and even between providers. If you're not happy with a VPN, there are hundreds of others that are likely there to meet your needs. Check out our GitHub and VPN reviews for more data and information, as well as privacy tools IO. If you're not happy with a service, I can almost guarantee there is one out there for you. Unfortunately, most advantages to VPNs deal with usability. <laughs> now let's cover disadvantages, which are gonna touch a little bit more on privacy and security. The first is VPNs are centralized entities requiring you to put full faith in them to handle your web traffic and data. Several VPNs who promised no logs were exposed for keeping logs, and there's really no method of verification for us to know for a fact if a provider keeps logs. The centralization of VPNs also makes them prone to any kind of government orders or attacks. Some preventions against this problem are to watch out for a VPN's previous history, jurisdiction, public team members, dedication to the privacy community, and any proof or evidence of no logs and proper security, such as audits or previous court cases. The second disadvantage to VPNs is cost. Tor is just free, and it's that simple. Unfortunately, cost and pricing is kind of a touchy subject for VPNs. Some have misleading marketing tactics, and most free services shouldn't be touched unless there's a clear business model. Another concern with VPNs is their clients, which are frequently proprietary. Two common issues that have come up are security issues in clients, as well as privacy concerns in analytics performed by clients, especially in the mobile realm. To prevent this, the best thing to do is sticking with official OpenVPN and Wirecard open source clients. The next best thing is sticking with open source VPNs like currently ProtonVPN, Molvad, iVPN, and PIA. The minimum recommendation is using closed source clients that have at least been audited for basic security issues. Speaking of open source, most VPNs are not only proprietary on the user's end, but also on the server end. The only project attempting to tackle this issue is Leap, which is utilized in very few VPNs, including RiseUp and Kalix VPN. Tor is almost entirely open source and decentralized, which completely solves this problem. The very last disadvantage to VPNs is their shortcomings in protecting you. Tor and many services that utilize Tor, like the Tor browser, Hunix, and Tails OS, are built to be anonymity tools. VPNs won't do much else outside of just changing your IP address and encrypting your web traffic, which is just a small amount of protection in the scheme of things. To recap, VPNs and Tor have different pros and cons, making them good tools for different reasons. All in all though, Tor is a much better tool for most of our uses, though VPNs do have a place as well if you're aware of their limitations and don't over rely on their capabilities. Though the same can also be said for Tor, there's no single magic bullet for privacy in the world, though Tor is probably as close as it gets. That's the end of this video, I want to thank the hated one for hopping on this video with me to collaborate, and I'm sure you've all seen his channel, and if you haven't, go check it out. He also tackles privacy and security to help educate the world. If you enjoy videos like these, make sure to let us know by liking the video below, share it to get in front of as many people as possible, and especially subscribing and joining our communities to interact with others passionate about privacy and security. I want to thank our patrons especially for continually supporting our work, and I will see everyone next time on TechLore. Before clocking out, YouTube, screw you for this stupid strike for valid sources in Go Incognito. You better accept my appeal. For those who don't know, this video you watched was a collab with The Hated One, and we were planning on uploading this at the same time last week, which the strike blocked. So if you haven't seen his video yet, make sure to go check it out on his channel. We collaborated there too, covering common VPN myths, and he did a wonderful job covering it. I want to thank him again for being open to a collaboration, and if you missed all announcements about this strike, it means you don't follow us anywhere, so join our communities. Because you missed two uploads, we're also on PeerTube and Library, where we still continue to upload, so join us there. Eat shit, YouTube, and thank you, the hated one.